uh, hello everyone. Uh, uh, today I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share uh, the experience of the e-commerce Korea and uh, act its activities on the uh, SDGs. Uh, first, of all, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I am a, a senior research fellow at uh, Korea Research Institute for Human Settlement, uh, which is a state-funded research organization. And I studied about planning uh, at Seoul National University and University of Tokyo. And currently I served uh, as president of uh, Urban, Histories, Urban History Society of Korea. And I work with uh, the UN Habitat as a policy expert, uh, particularly in process of uh, making a new urban agenda. And also I work with the uh, uh, Korean National Commission for UNESCO and I'm a member of uh, ECOMOS Korea uh, and quite recently I joined the Korea. And Korea. Uh, and my colleague, uh, Ji Yeon Bae, uh, uh, she's a, a couldn't uh, attend uh, today because he, she has another engagement. Uh, she started urban planning in the uh, University of Pennsylvania. And uh, now currently, uh, now the program manager of housing uh, policy division in Seoul Metropolitan Government. And she worked on the Seoul so which is a Korean Neo Confusion Academies uh, Preservation Capacity Building Program for local governments. And also he involved in many activities in e-commerce Korea from 2018. And I'd like to uh, introduce the Ecomos Korea. Uh, Ecomos Korea uh, established in uh, 1999 uh, with aim of promoting the conservation, protection, use and enhancement of monument uh, building complexes and sites in Korea uh, in cooperation with Ecomos International. And we focused on the consultation of protection and management of world heritage, world cultural heritage, nurturing knowledge on the cultural heritage and promoting uh, research and publication. And uh, the e-commerce Korea president, In Ho Song, uh, he is the professor of the University of Seoul. And we have uh, 100, uh, 74 members of professional uh, with background of history, architecture, geography, urban planning, and so on. And mostly we focused on academic activities, study, field trip, and forums uh, in the following uh, seven subgroups, uh, cultural tourism, uh, fortification and military uh, heritage, and water and heritage, uh, heritage impact analysis, and South and North Korean exchange, climate change and heritage, uh, emerging professionals. So we are holding the forum and uh, exchanging knowledge, and we are going on a field trip uh, around this issue. And this is uh, a uh, recent forums and international activities. Uh, uh, recent forums uh, uh, was held on issue of uh, management, management approach to uh, fortification and military heritage and cooperation between South and North Korea, uh, particularly on uh, demilitarization uh, zone and also introduction of uh, the heritage impact analysis to Korea and so on. And also we uh, are involved in uh, many uh, international activities such as uh, Japan-Korea uh, e-commerce exchange meetings uh, and so on. 
and we publish uh, many, uh, you know, the document reports. Uh, and uh, uh, recently, uh, we published a report on the uh, preservation of tanning uh, sports center uh, based on our research and the uh, cultural heritage tourism and the World Heritage Tongdosa plans. And also we uh, published uh, the uh, e-commerce Korean newsletter quarterly. And we just published 20 years of uh, e-commerce Korea uh, in commemoration of the 20 years anniversary of e-commerce Korea. And the new uh, interpretation of world heritage. Uh, this is a, a, a part of our research project. And uh, next, I'd like to uh, introduce the activities on the SG, SDG in Korea. Uh, first, in the uh, Korean government uh, developed a so-called KSDG, uh, which is the Korean goals for the implementing SDG, uh, which seven, 17 goals and uh, 119 targets and 200 uh, 35 indicator um, through uh, the inclusive participation of national, local, and the civil society and professional. And also uh, the national government established the first national plan for sustainable development uh, in order to adopt uh, the KSDG in the national policy frame, framework. Uh, so it su suggests the impl implementation as strategies of the KSG, SDG in Korea. And we also built governance uh, for implementation of SDG. Uh, national Committee for Sustainable Development uh, was established, uh, established, established and the local committee for sustainable development and stakeholders, uh, including civil actors and experts. And also we uh, summit a voluntary national review uh, 2016. This is national review on the current status of Korea for implementing SDGs. And I'd like to introduce the a uh, new vision of uh, heritage policy in Korea uh, released by the Cultural Heritage Administration uh, in Korea in 1918, uh, 1919, uh, 2019, sorry. Uh, I'd like to introduce this, uh, this plan because it's uh, quite uh, illustrate the new policy trend uh, in Korea. Uh, which is focusing on the active role of heritage in economic, social, and uh, cultural development in cities and regions. The vision is, uh, uh, is uh, shared heritage and creating future value. Uh, this is the traditional you know, policy principle uh, of the uh, heritage policies. But the new plans, uh, you know, provide uh, these three principles: the future value, you know, participation from below, and heritage in making. The previous practice the focused on the past-oriented, but new one uh, focused on the future values. And from the government lead uh, heritage policy to the participation-oriented from Below. And also the future practice focused on uh, cultural property, but new uh, principles uh, emphasized uh, is heritage is something that we uh, making all together. Those is broaden the perspective on heritage. I think the uh, this is a, a, a 
it's quite a representative case to uh, in, 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 in to, to see the change of heritage uh, policy in Korea, uh, which is Gongju Asian ancient uh, capital city preservation uh, preservation plan. Uh, this plan is uh, basic, basically uh, arranged by the city government uh, called Gongju and approved by the Cultural Heritage Administration. Uh, but uh, a lot of the uh, e-commerce Korea members actually participate uh, this uh, this plan. So it, it's kind of a result of co or cooperation and partnership so between the experts and e-commerce and the government side. So Gongju is a locate, local city uh, with uh, more than uh, so 100,000 populations and also uh, world heritage, world cultural heritage site uh, for an ancient capital of Korea. The first, first plan is started 2012 and the second plan is uh, year uh, 2012, 2020. And focusing on the, the uh, balance uh, between preservation and utilization of historic assets of the city uh, by designating two different zones, so which is a uh, special preservation zone and the preservation and promotion zone. This, the special uh, preservation zone focused on the actually the preservation of heritage, but the second uh, pre preservation and uh, promotion zone focused on the supporting actually the uh, residents and people living in there. Uh, so how to utilize uh, the uh, historic assets uh, for the benefit of the uh, local people and local communities. Uh, and uh, the plan uh, suggests project uh, with government invest for revitalizing the local economy, supporting uh, residents' uh, livelihood. And also it plans arranged by the inclusive and participatory planning process, uh, planning process uh, particularly uh, reflecting the voices from local uh, residents and merchants. So uh, I think that this uh, plan uh, showcased the, the changing nature of the heritage policy in Korea from uh, per, uh, the preservations oriented to the utilizations and the making some kind of benefit uh, for the local city. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much for the listening. So uh, e-commerce Korea uh, so wants to share uh, more information from our experience and also learn a lot from the other uh, countries' experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zeun. That's a, a wonderful um, news from e-commerce Korea. Uh, what we can do is that we will have the next presentation first and then have the questions uh, at later. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, uh, Sehun. I think uh, Ananya is not here, but Fergus is here for the presentation for ICTC. Um, Fergus, are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, 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 more, it's morning here in Canada, so you, you do get me. And uh, Gabe, I'm competing with your background. So I, 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 <laughs> a different I'm, I'm season, like, yes. <laughs> it, it is a different season, and it's uh, somewhat uh, unique. But it's uh, first off, uh, thank you for all the presentations that have preceded. It's, uh, we have a number of very capable contributors from Ecomos Korea to the ICTC, uh, Dr. Suk Young Han and Haishung Shim, amongst others, who do participate. So we do welcome the opportunities that different NATCOMs have provided uh, and contributions that have been made to our ISC. And second of all, thank you very much for the uh, for the internship presentations. I actually have a, uh, an in a longstanding intern who I've been working with as part of our ICTC program for the past four years. 
And she gave me the double happy news this week that uh, after four years, she finally got a job with Parks Canada, which is our main body responsible for World Heritage. And she also told me that she's expecting a daughter in March. So, you know, it's uh, it goes beyond work and it goes beyond uh, cultural heritage. So, again, it's nice to have those good news come along as well. So, that's my start. So, I'll go into my presentation. Um, unfortunately, Ananya won't be able to join us, but uh, we worked together on a number of projects. Plus, she had a big presentation this week along with my other ICTC colleagues at the Scientific Symposium. And so, you know, this is just to give you a background of the work that we're doing with the ICTC, uh, some of the different initiatives that we have right now, and a number of, of uh, initiatives that are underway. So, start off. This is me. Uh, this is what I look like when I'm... Sorry, uh, Fergus, uh, we, we don't see your slides. Um, do you want okay, to share well, the slides? or? No, uh, I didn't. I, I thought I was sharing. Let's just see. Let me try that again. You know what? I do enough presentations. I should actually be more practiced. Oh, there you go. We okay. are about to see okay. everything. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So there's a starting slide again. Sorry about that. And so, okay, again, as I said, uh, this is just to give you a bit of background in terms of the work that we're doing with the ICTC, plus the work that we're involved with with regard to the SDGs. So, again, just to start off, uh, this is me. Uh, this is what I look like when I'm dressed up and don't have leaves in the background. And um, in essence, I've been working in the field for about 25 years, started in Hanoi, and uh, now I'm working more in Canada and Africa at this point in time. Um, I've lectured at universities, primarily McGill University here in Montreal. And also my current work involves um, working with UNESCO, the World Tourism Organization, Organization of World Heritage Cities and World Monuments Fund. And as I mentioned, I'm doing a, a number of projects in Africa as well. In terms of Ananya, she's involved with a very interesting organization called banglanattack.com. I highly recommend that you take a look at it if you haven't uh, heard about it before in the past. It's one of the organizations that have been recognized by the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Uh, it's an organization that really has contributed to uh, the, the sort of inculcation of sustainable, really solid sustainable tourism initiatives in West Bengal, and Western India. We've actually uh, visited and uh, done an assessment of the great work that they're doing with regard to local cultural heritage and also a revival of arts and culture to support local communities in the Sundarbans area, which is a shared world heritage site with Bangladesh. And so it's a very sort of, you know, interesting and unique work that they're doing. So I highly recommend that you take a look in terms of the initiatives that they're involved in. She is a very dynamic leader along with her partner, um, Amitabha Bhattacharya, in terms of the work he is doing in this field. So to give you a bit of a background in terms of the ICTC, we've been around for a while, probably since the 1970s. We now actually have, uh, we just we bypassed the 200 member marks. So we now have 200 members and we're involved in planning. That's my background, landscape architecture, archeology, span economics, and other backgrounds that somehow tie into tourism or what we refer to as the visitor economy. We provide study tours for uh, usually for ICTC members, but we have had others who have joined us. And what it is is that it, these tours basically involve a one week uh, intensive participation, observation, and then report on a key question that a destination has been trying to resolve or address in a short term format. And in the past couple of years, we've gone to uh, <coughs> Pardon me, India and the Sundarbans. We've gone <coughs> to Mallorca and Spain and a number of countries, and also to uh, Montreal and Berlin, Montreal, Quebec, Burlington, Vermont, here in North America. <coughs> Sorry. We also do World Heritage Tourism Assessments, provide professional research services that you'll hear about shortly, and also policy development support because, as we believe, and many of you know, Tourism pretty well touches on most facets of cultural heritage, intangible and tangible. The basis of our operation is the doctrinal text, the International Cultural Tourism Charter, 
We are in the process of updating it and finalizing it. We'll hear again about that shortly. And we also cooperate with other ISCs, Scientific Council, NATCOMs, international agencies and organizations. So we have a, a broad brush in terms of who we work with and the uh, interoperability and interconnections that we have when we work with other organizations. Now, in terms of our focus, there are actually three SDGs that specifically touch on tourism. Uh, the first is SDG 8.9, which is to devise and implement policies to promote sustainable tourism, which creates jobs, promotes local culture, and products. So again, very important in terms of the way that it's thinking towards a more sustainable livelihood, uh, community support type of role or initiative. Next one is 12B, how to develop and implement tools to monitor sustainable development impacts of sustainable tourism, which creates jobs, promotes local culture, and products. So again, to actually make sure that the tourism initiatives and the work that is being undertaken is actually fulfilling uh, what its intentions are to support local communities and livelihoods. There's also 11.4, it doesn't mention tourism per se, but we are one of the key supports for it, and that is to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. And we, are, we see ourselves strongly aligning with that in support of the uh, great work that has been done with Anikamas and other organizations in this area. There is also 14.7, which mentions tourism, but again, it's a word that's thrown in there and it deals more with tourism in the marine environment. So I had mentioned before that we are updating the International Cultural Tourism Charter and it has received approval from the scientific committee and the advisory committee, and we're just in the process now in terms of, uh, sorry, scientific council and the advisory committee, and we're in the process right now of just awaiting uh, final review uh, by the uh, board in March, and then hopefully will be approved uh, in Thailand uh, at the AGA there next autumn. So essentially, um, the objectives you'll see on the right, I'm not gonna read them all out, but the intention is to really look more from a community-based standpoint in terms of um, it's one of the things to be working within a visitor economy and the different sort of stakeholders and individuals who have interests in terms of um, uh, generating economic development, jobs, um, other sort of aspects. But there's a real sort of key in terms of uh, how you get people involved, participate, and you know, addressing some of the things that are really sort of key in terms of ECOMOS itself as an organization, such as a rights-based approach, and also, of course, addressing the SDGs and climate change action as well. So again, this is some of the things that have been shaping the direction of this charter. There are a number of, uh, there are seven principles in all. Uh, again, um, you'll see at the beginning, there's a focus on responsibility and working with communities, um, how we manage it, the different tools and policies, uh, generating you know, interpretation and important educational initiatives. And again, you know, you go down the list and at the end, of course, we talk about climate action and sustainability measures as related to the SDGs and other climate change initiatives out there. So this, um, when we had originally proposed the the updating of the document in 2017, the tourism world, as you can imagine, was very different. And um, we had in fact had a draft in the winter of 2019, but of course something happened in March 2020 uh, with the advent of the global pandemic. So we had to go back to the drawing board and essentially look at a number of factors in terms of what that represented as an opportunity in terms of how do we think, rejuvenate, and renew tourism at uh, cultural heritage sites? And also at the same time to try and address some of the emerging issues and really, you know, short term with the pandemic, uh, but the longer term issues like the SDGs and, of course, climate change. So we have a, uh, a number of initiatives that are underway. I mentioned that we do professional and advisory services. I'm in the process right now with working with uh, five other ICTC colleagues, and we are developing what we're referring to as a destination resilience index. 
And specifically, the intention of it is, is to work with the Organization of World Heritage Cities, uh, which some of you may know, some of you not. It's an organization based out of Quebec City here in Canada, about five hours down the road from me by car. And they are they have a membership of over 300 World Heritage Cities uh, that basically have a number of common issues, a number of common concerns um, related to management, cultural heritage, and of course, tourism. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is try to assist them in terms of ways that they can under uh, uh, support the underlying issues with regard to tourism recovery and renewal. Uh, and in a way that, you know, in keeping with the charter and also a new UNESCO tool called the Visitor Management Assessment and Strategy Tool uh, to really try and support uh, the management of cultural heritage, but also the support of local communities, their environments, and also things like the SDGs and climate change goals as well. Um, and these are aligned with SDGs 12B, the monitoring one, 11 cultural heritage, and eight sustainable tourism. The other initiatives that we have underway is that there's a colleague who's online, uh, Pankaj Manchanda, who's an ICTC colleague and a friend of mine. And he's been developing something called Aug Traveler. Again, some of you I know are familiar with it. And he's basically been using it as a way that's been very appropriate, especially during this time of COVID, with regard to guided artificial reality and geolocation-based heritage trails in India. Uh, you can actually view it online. And again, it's a very interesting sort of exceptional way to think of heritage from um, an arm's length or a distance perspective. Um, and to understand the history and the dynamic and the other elements related to those uh, World Heritage Sites. And again, these are related to um, 12B, 11, 8, and 4, and 4 is the educational SDG. I should mention that it's also directed towards schools and uh, education as well for high school and younger students. So again, as a way of really inculcating this knowledge and thinking at a young age in terms of how you think of uh, heritage and how you use it, uh, the different facets behind it. Another, this is one of my favorite projects. Uh, this is what I worked on this year. We were working with ECOMOS Germany at something called the Buzluja Project Foundation. This indeed does look like a spaceship. This is a building that only lasted for about nine years. And it was built uh, towards the end of the communist era in uh, Bulgaria. And it was part of what Germany, uh, ECOMOS Germany has been working on called the Dissonant Heritage Project. And the Dissonant Heritage Project is basically one where there are different sort of remnants of the uh, post-World War II, uh, Cold War, Soviet era architecture that have been constructed across Europe um, with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. Uh, they become very unloved and left behind and are falling apart. And this monument here, located in the mountains of uh, Eastern Bulgaria, um, is one that's in the process of restoration. And indeed, it does look like a spaceship. And I recommend that you highly you know, take a look at it just to see uh, its design and the restoration work that's being undertaken in part through ECOMOS Germany. But it also is a reflection in terms of the different approaches to heritage, how they're used, and uh, how you think of it as a tourism destination uh, beyond its original purpose. So again, aligns with SDGs 12B, 11 and 8, monitoring cultural heritage and sustainable tourism. One of the other projects that has been involved, uh, one of our members have been involved with, uh, Tameo Dea, who's based in Mallorca, is that the the United Nations World Tourism Organization has a sustainable tourism observatory project that's been going on for the past 20 years. And again, it was, of course, predates the SDGs, but it really gives a strong sense in terms of the sustainability work that's being undertaken at a site or destination, um, how it can be consistently applied, and the different sort of aspects that can be considered as part of the visitor economy there. And um, in the case of Mallorca in particular, it's been a well-known mass tourism destination, particularly from visitors from Europe, i.e. Germany and the United Kingdom, amongst others. And they're really trying to turn that to a more 
culturally based, uh, locally, local community based sustainable tourism model. And this is what they're using as one of their drivers. And again, it's focused on SDGs 12B, 11, and 8. And these are some of the different facets in terms of what they touch on and what they're measuring. You can see here with the sort of SDG wheel on the left and then the, the different uh, SDGs that it touches upon. So again, you know, a very broad based approach when it comes to the thinking behind the tourism model at that destination. Um, unfortunately, Ananya isn't here to uh, express the case study for here in India, but I have actually seen their sites in um, Sundarbans and uh, West Bengal. And as mentioned, their key program is Art for Life. And one of the aspects that they try to do is they try to support local crafts, arts, weaving, other elements that are really important, not only for the communities, but also the state of West Bengal, which in fact has a uh, specific uh, state department that is dedicated to that. So it's an actual sort of important part of the local state economy, but they're trying to really inculcate that on the ground in the Sundarbans. And they also have elements related to theater, related to dance. So all different assets were, and facets where they're really trying to have local culture that is retrenched and supported and to also serve as a potential role for, um, as an economic driver for tourism in that region. So what are our challenges in achieving the SDG targets? Uh, this uh, image on the right, of course, is from Venice after the flooding in 2019. Um, and so, you know, that's, sort of speaks to climate change, but there are three key ones that we're looking at. Um, one of the issues for us in terms of the targets that I mentioned, particularly for 8.9 and 12B that deal with uh, sustainable tourism, they're based more on quantitative elements that are really hard to focus upon from a local community standpoint. And these are specifically gross domestic product and jobs that are related to tourism. And, you know, the, the issue is, especially when you talk about benefits to local communities, as articulated in the targets, uh, is that it's not really qualitative, you know, in terms of what's the actual community benefit and the experience of persons going to these destinations. The second point is that it's, you know, it's thinking about uh, returning to the previous level of global visitor economy and tourism. Um, it's, you're seeing various varying numbers right now and what that tourism is going to look like. I've heard anything from 2022 to 2028 to returning to pre-2020 uh, tourism numbers and uh, visitor impact and economic benefit. So to that end, it's, uh, it's going to be a real challenge in terms of the global visitor economy and tourism to really, you know, all that investment, all that participation from the work global workforce where tourism represents 10% of the global domestic product. Um, it's, you know, it's going to be a, a long road back for different economies that depend upon tourism. And finally, as I mentioned before, there's a greater challenge of climate change, um, especially with this potential of a 2.4 uh, uh, centimeter rise in sea levels, particularly those areas that are in coastal communities like here in Venice and other parts of the world. It's going to be a real challenge to try and maintain not only tourism, which is sort of a facet of economic development for these places, but also the livelihoods and well-being of the people who live there. So we have a number of initiatives underway. Um, I mentioned study tours before. And one of the key things is that we are going to ensure that sustainability will remain a key pillar of destination assessment and recommendations whenever we travel to different locales or places. Uh, we do and will continue to cooperate with other ISCs and NATCOMs to address SDG priorities, climate change, Indigenous people's rights, and other rights-based rights -based approaches. Sorry. And finally, you know, ICTC projects will incorporate new measures from the Charter to focus on sustainability. And in fact, we're using that right now within the organization World Heritage Cities Project, where it is serving as a foundation for our work and discussion. So that being said, thank you. Nice to see you all. And, uh, and thank you for, uh, hopefully you'll be able to give us a, a contact us for more information that we'd be happy to share with you all.
regarding the ICTC. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Fergus. I think that's a very comprehensive um, information. And congratulations, by the way, for the ICTC um, uh, charter, the recommendation to pass it um, for 2021 in ADCOM. So, um, and you've really put in uh, SD, uh, sustainable development as one of the key pillars of that uh, charter. Uh, well done. Um, I, I, I think we have, uh, um, we're coming to the almost two hour mark, but uh, let's have uh, some questions. I know that Anasha has a question for Fergus. Maybe Fergus can read it first and I can just ask my question to Sehun. So Sehun, um, the, what you had is that there was a 2019 uh, new vision of heritage policy in Korea. So how has uh, Ecomos Korea, um, let's say responded to that new vision? And is there any projects or, or initiatives that have been happening? Good. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, uh, the first question, you, you had raised uh, actually two questions. The first question is the, the contribution of e-commerce uh, to the development of these new visions. And the e-commerce Korea is working closely with the government, the Cultural Heritage Administration. But uh, uh, in, in case we mostly uh, participate in the individual basis and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the consultation process and the project is making uh, these new visions. Uh, so all, the, all the experts are actually uh, the member of e-commerce. So uh, we participate, uh, in, uh, we contribute and participate an individual basis in the making process of this new vision. Okay, and the second uh, question is, uh, are there uh, project or policies that uh, has been created? You mean according to this new vision, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, it is uh, hard to say just a couple of uh, project and policies, because this is basically the vision and principle and strategy. So all the government policies and projects are influenced by this new vision. And so, uh, you know, it's countless, you know, many uh, projects and pro uh, policies are basically, uh, you know, the uh, aligned uh, with these visions after uh, 2019. Okay, so we hope to hear more from the work of Ecomus sure. Korea with the new, this new vision. Thank you. Uh, maybe for the next one, uh, Anasha, do you want to ask your question to Fergus? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so Fergus, I just I post the question in chat and um, yeah. if you had a chance to read it, I don't, I don't need to repeat it to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I saw the question, and uh, thanks to Nasha. It's uh, nice to see you again, and thank you for uh, the question as well. And you know, it's 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 a, it's a good question, very thoughtful in the sense that you know a lot of the work that we're doing right now is with uh, World Heritage Sites. I'm involved with a uh, UNESCO task force in conjunction with ICROM and IUCN, and we've just done a survey with different uh, World Heritage Sites. This is a one on tourism and recovery in COVID nineteen. And um, also with the organization of World Heritage Cities. And one of the first things is just, you know, just remember to, it's important to remember a number of factors. One is that uh, there are now 1,153 World Heritage Sites. Not every site is created equal. And, you know, there are different sort of facets when it comes to visitation, when it comes to tourism. And uh, the second thing that's also important to remember is that um, there are things that are in the control of local, regional, national governments and the things that they cannot control. Uh, you think we might remember the traffic light system that they had in the UK that was affecting tourism to different countries. And there are also visa controls and restrictions between some countries as well. So these are some of the things that uh, these sites have to, have to play with and have to work with. But what we are seeing is that, uh, especially at this time, there are a number of sites that are working towards rethinking their tourism model and saying, you know, what are we actually you know, trying to get out of tourism at the site and destination? 
and how are we presenting ourselves? And a lot of that involves either, you know, this is a time when they're trying to address some of the shortfalls, whether it's um, some of the restoration work that hadn't been able to be undertaken before, some of the capacity building that's really necessary in terms of uh, how visitors and people within the community are being informed about heritage, and also the different uh, policies that are underway in terms of working with different tour operators. You're starting to see a number of sites that are starting to implement different controls as in the case of Machu Picchu or Venice, or in the case of Dubrovnik, where they're limiting the arrival of uh, cruise ships to four per day. So again, you're seeing a lot more control measures that are being sort of implemented. Um, at the same time, it's, uh, like I said, they're those things that are just not in the control of these destinations. And uh, in some cases, as with Bali or some of the national parks in uh, Africa, for example, uh, tourism is just gone for now. And so in the case of Bali, you've seen people return back to traditional activities uh, away from tourism. And in the case of some of the national parks in Africa, you're starting to see a, a loss of biodiversity and species because of the fact that just the rangers and the wardens and the guards mechanisms that are in place are not there. So as a result, um, there are some real challenges going on in these other spaces that otherwise would have depended upon tourism. Thank you. Um, okay, I yes. think that, uh, th that's good, Fergus. I think that the, th we have to um, see that tourism is one uh, of the things that drives uh, World Heritage Sites and other sites, but also uh, the, there's a rich of, uh, diversity of uh, economic um, uh, opportunities that also need to be developed. And that's what we learned from COVID. Yes, um, and that's, that's, that's and just to add to that, Gabe, to think that's one of the recommendations we have for the OWHC and our subsequent project is that there needs to be a broader base of economic development. We're not strictly uh, focused upon tourism. There needs to be an opportunity to diversify, uh, perhaps associated, but also ones that maybe resonate with more local traditions and uh, economic realities. Great. Uh, thanks, Fergus. I think uh, uh, um, if, if uh, I would suggest that we wrap up our um, conversation for today and uh, thank you for, for the uh, people that have stayed behind for the two hour mark and, and I really appreciate the, the, your time here.